All right, you asked for it, so you got it. It's the dissected rat. Now, you may notice this guy. You remember this guy. See all these little strings? I tied each one of those on. It sucked. But no, they're there, but whatever. So we're going to do digestive system now. So I'm going to kind of walk my way down. Anything with a little star or asterisk or whatever you call it in the lab book is fair game on a dissected specimen. But I'm going to try to keep it simple. Okay, So you may get a limited uh, coverage. So there's obviously teeth, right? Okay. So inside of there would be the oral cavity or mouth. There's a tongue in there. I'm not going to tear his face open and look at it. Pharynx is the throat. You can't really see it here, even though it says. Uh, the esophagus is going to be a tube that lies behind. This is the trachea. You can see the trachea right there. Del definitely tell the trachea because of its that ribbed sort of appearance. The esophagus is going to lie right behind there. Let's see if I can find it or if it's already exposed. You're supposed to check this stuff out beforehand so that you don't just go looking around. Um, you can trust me that the esophagus is right behind there. So there's a tube. Eh. Fail. Well, it's back there. It's probably stuck to the back of this trachea. Anyway, if you see the trachea pulled aside and another tube being pulled out from behind it, that tube is the esophagus. But in any case, that that esophagus runs back there, dorsal to the trachea, uh, runs back uh, basically through the liver. And this is, so this is the liver. Uh, we'll get to it in a minute here. We're gonna go find the stomach. So this is the stomach right there. This guy's kind of dry, but yeah. So he's kind of shriveled up a little bit, but this is the stomach right here, this big, sucker. Uh, the stomach is going to feed into the, and you'd find the connection to the esophagus would be right up here. So, so haha, ha, I did find the esophagus. It's right there. There it is. <laughs> I just didn't find it up here, but I knew you had one. So stomach feeds into the duodenum and the duodenum is this first segment of the uh, small intestine. I'm not sure if all this stuff's coming out really well, but looks good in person. Uh, so you can clearly see a difference between the stomach sort of texture and firmness and then this tube right here, which is the first segment of the small intestine, the duodenum. Now, as I told you before, uh, I'm not going to say, and then here's the jejunum because the jejunum kind of just, it becomes jejunum at some point, And then ultimately it becomes the uh, ileum, which I thought I could. All right, so I'm used to dissecting this guy from the, other side so I was like which side am I looking at uh, but if you wanted to follow this guy now I, I basically cheated and kind of went to the large intestine so but the part of the small intestine right here that connects to the large intestine sorry did I do it wrong this is clearly small intestine right here see all that nice mesentery that's what that sheet is by the way if you ever wondered, if you ever wanted a good look at mesentery, it's that stuff, that shiny stuff right there, it's this material. And it supplies the intestines with, uh, with blood and lymph and nerves and so on. So, dee -dee 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 -dee, small intestine comes around. Where is it going to? Why can't I do this from the, the other side? Bother. Oh, there it is. Okay. So small intestine in my left hand right here meets up with the large intestine right here. Now, it, there's a big bag here, right? What is that? Well, there's the, this is the beginning of the large intestine, and the beginning of the large intestine is the cecum, and you can see a little blind sac right there, right there, I hope. That's like a little blind end sac. So this whole big structure is really the cecum, uh, and you can tell right there that that's a dead end. Uh, and then the cecum merges into the large intestine right here, uh, which is going to have an ascending, a transverse, and a descending colon. I'm not going to find them all. Uh, you're not going to have to identify them. Just know that that's colon. It's much bigger in diameter, you can see, which is why it's called a large intestine. That thing will come around and eventually find its way down here to the uh, rectum. So we're, d we're down here basically in the rectum. Uh, there, there's an actual turd in there. 
inside of this guy's rectum. Uh, and if you followed it farther down, that's the anal canal down in there. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's visible. That's okay. All right. Uh, with the anus being un under the tail. Let me see if I missed anything along the way. Uh, stomach. Uh, mesentery, duodenum, jejunum. You're not going to have to identify the jejunum. You would have to identify the duodenum as the part right next to the stomach. So if it's the tube right next to the stomach, it's the duodenum. If it's the tube right next to the uh, cecum, the large intestine, it's the ileum. So uh, liver, um, oh, th there's a term there, peritoneum. Well, if you remember what a peritoneum is, it's basically a, uh, a serous membrane. It's a, a layer on the surface of the organ. So this is the, on the surface of all of these digestive organs is what's called the visceral peritoneum. That's just the surface uh, membrane. The, the uh, parietal peritoneum is going to be the lining of the body wall. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And I think that's it for dissection. Let me go ahead and not cut. I guess you can cut. 